Hey everyone, my name is Michael and today I want to have a look at a new feature in Hot Chocolate 14 which allows you to put queries or mutations or subscriptions basically everywhere. Before we get started, I have a new course on Dorm Train, Getting Started with GraphQL in .NET. This is not the typical Getting Started course that you find everywhere else. With over seven and a half hours of content, it teaches what GraphQL is, but also dives deep into patterns and best practices, schema design and schema evolution. The first 300 of you who are getting this course will get a 20% discount with the code STYPE20. If you want to dive even deeper, you can join one of our online workshops where the Core Chili Cream team teaches you everything we know about GraphQL from backend to frontend. And because I'm launching a new course on Dome Train, I'm chipping in a 30% discount on all of our online workshops. Check out our online workshops on learn.chilicream.com. All the links and information you can find below the video in the description. If you like our content, please hit the like and subscribe button below the video. And with that, let's dive in. So in my demo project here, we have the catalog API and down here we have the types. And this is actually a traditional setup where we have here the queries and we have here the mutations, right? And this works by declaring basically a static or instance class. And then we have here on top the mutation type as a marker, everything in here is mutations. Same is for the query type where we have the same thing here. So with Hot Chocolate 14, you can still do that. And that is a good practice to do it like this. But you also have now flexibility to move these things much more freely around. Like for instance, I could, instead of having here a queries class, I could make that an operations class. So I could say, I have all my product operations in here. And this is actually not a query type, but a collection of all my operations I want to have. And then I can just annotate on here query. And that means this guy here, that is a query and we will put it to the right type. And this guy is also a query. And then I could also go here in the mutations, like in the product mutations and get all of these guys and co-locate them in my operation method. But instead of having query here, we're gonna put mutation on here. And let me quickly do that to all of them. And lastly, we could also do the same to subscriptions, like we could copy it over into our operation type here. And then this would all sit in one class. Why this is nice, like you have the flexibility to have single operation classes now where you can co-locate now all your operation types. This is actually not all of this feature, right? We can also co-locate our resolvers with our actual GraphQL types, and this can lead to more compact designs depending on how large your types are, right? I could, for instance, grab here the node type, that's the product type, and you can see we have here a node resolver. That's the product by ID resolver. So I could say, actually, I take this one and put it in my node type. This is my object type. So I could also move it out and say, actually, let's put all the functionality for the product into the product. And we also have the root methods for this product within this type, works the same. So let me just quickly show you if I would run that. And then we go to Banana Cake Pop, you can see here we have our operations on the query type. And then we can see that we have a product by ID. This product by ID does not sit in our operations type here anymore, does not sit here, but sits actually in the type itself. It could also sit anywhere else. It just needs to be a public static or internal static method and you can have it anywhere. And just to prove that, let's quickly debug it. Okay, debugger is running. We go back here and we quickly build an operation. So get product by ID. And then we take here the product by ID and we just want to have the name. I put the ID in here, we run it and you can see we are hitting now the breakpoint within our type. So we could now put everything that is around product into this type. So instead of having an operations type, and this really depends how much code you have. It can be nice to spread it a bit out into separate classes, but it can also be nice to have it all in one place and then have everything that is related to product really in the product file. I've refactored this now. We have now everything in our product type here. You can see this is just marked here with the object type attribute. 
and this is my product. And now I have down here all my, you could say factory methods to fetch a product or create a product or whatever. Everything related to GraphQL, to the GraphQL product type is now co-located in one file. And that includes here the subscription and mutations. Before we run that again, let's have a look at what is actually happening behind the scenes. So behind the scenes, I'm using our new source generator and this is not final. So there's a lot of things that we are still working on, but uh, you will get the idea. So what I configured this project here, and let me collapse that. Let's have a look at this here is that we emit the code that actually is being produced by the source generator into the file system. So we can go here into the object folder and there you can see we have the generated files. So this is all what the source generator produces now. And you can see we are also producing here the resolvers for our types that we generate. This is the new resolver compiler and you can see everything that is in these nodes, brand node, product node or whatever, that are annotated with this type here or that are annotated with one of these guys is actually getting compiled or at build time compiled resolvers. You can see that here. This is basically the resolver code. We have some initialization that the schema building process can hook into. And then we have here the resolvers for the certain types. In this case, the resolver has here the parent and we recognize that uh, brand here is for instance, the parent. So we are resolving that already at build time. There are things that we cannot determine at build time. For instance, this paging argument. That is something where I wrote a parameter expression builder actually for runtime compilation. And uh, we recognize that people still want to do that. So if you want to extend the resolver compiler with custom arguments, you can still do that. And we just have these bindings then that we hook into our code here and that you get initialized then at runtime. Still, the heavy lifting is done then on build time and we just hook in the missing parts at runtime. So the same is happening here for products. That's actually where we worked on. And it has all my resolvers here that I have on my type, but not actually the resolvers that we had there with the query annotated. And that is correct because we are stripping them and we are moving them to the query type. And you can see that we have here the root types actually. And when we look here at the catalog type, that's just the type description. So we still pass in here the member, but we are no longer reflecting the code there. So we compile the resolver as all the other resolver code at build time, but we still pass on the member here into the field of the schema configuration so that things like naming conventions where you build your names based on the member info still works. And that's not the problematic piece if we talk about AOT. But you can now look at these uh, kinds of things, how we generate the code for all of these kinds of things. And this is not only here for the query type, you can see this is also done here for the mutation type and also for the subscription type. So every time you annotate something on a static method, with query or mutation or subscription, it becomes its own extension type to the query. And we also make sure that we register that correctly. So there's here this registration code, not here actually, it's here the type module class. And that is where we register all the types that we find and where we actually here have these helper methods. So we make sure that there is a query type if there's no query type, we're gonna create it. So it's a try at root type. So we add an empty query type if there is none, and then we extend it with these types. This is what technically happening. Okay, this was just a small dive into the source generator. We are still working a lot on that to get all the edge cases in and whatnot. But now let's run this thing again and see that it works out as before. So the server is up. I'm going back here and we can just run it as before. If we go here to the schema reference, I can refresh that. And you can see we still have all the products fields, although they are now collocated with the type. So what do you think about the new flexibility that you have with annotating actually a root operation on its resolver rather than on the type? 
like it can get messy if you do it wrong, but it gives you also a lot more flexibility how you organize your code. And for Hot Chocolate 14, we have the theme of productivity and also flexibility. So we want to make the difficult parts easy, making you productive, but we also want to give you the flexibility that you can organize your code however you want. So sound out in the comments and give us feedback. If you wanna help our project, please go to GitHub and give us a GitHub star. And with this, I'm out.